my little Margie. I've been both mother and father to her since she was born. She's grown up now, and you think my job's all done, eh? <laughs> well, that's what you think. When she was little, I could spank her and make her mind me. I had control over her. I made her eat her spinach, no candy before meals. And when she disobeyed, I took her roller skates away for a week. But what can you do when a girl reaches this age? She's completely out of hand. I've got a problem, believe me. I've got a problem. That's my father. I've raised him from childhood. That is, my childhood. He's nearly 50 now, and you'd think he'd settle down, wouldn't you? Well, that's what you think. Today, he looks better in shorts on a tennis court than fellas 25. Girls wink at him, and what's worse, he winks back at them. I want a nice, old, comfortable father. I try to look after him, but he just won't settle down. I've got a problem, believe me, I've got a problem. Margie, what's the matter with you? I asked for some coffee, and look where you poured it. Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. What's the matter with you? You've been in a trance for nearly a week. It's convention. That's the whole trouble, convention. When a man sees a girl he'd like to meet, all he has to do is walk up to her and say, Pardon me, didn't we meet in Oskaloosa, Iowa, at the Interstate Hog Calling Contest? <laughs> okay, baby, what's our big problem with convention? Well, there's a fellow who has lunch every day at the Coronet Restaurant. I'd love to meet him, but I can't. Oh, I see. But that's the way our civilization operates, honey. But why? Why should it be like that? Because the female is supposed to be pursued. The female is the magnet. The male is a steel object. The magnet is supposed to attract a steel object. Well, something's wrong. Maybe my battery's run down. <laughs> I gotta get going. Dad, couldn't the magnet maybe cheat a little and sort of sidle over to the steel object? Just sort of sidle, sort of? Margie, I forbid you to sort of sidle, sort of. Whether you like convention or not, you're going to adhere to it. You understand? Yes, sir. Now stop acting like a schoolgirl with a puppy dog crush. Smile. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Odette. Good morning, Mr. Albright. Hi, Margie. Hi. Oh, you haven't gotten to meet him yet. Did you try what I told you to try at lunch yesterday? Sure, I tried it. I even went a step further. I not only bumped into him, I upset a glass of water in his lap. Well, didn't that start a conversation? Yeah. I said, oh, I'm sorry. And he said, you ought to be. And that was the end of the conversation. Did you ask him in the restaurant who he was? Yes. His name is Norman Masterson, and he works for the FBI. Oh, a G-man. Tell me. Does he look like Dennis O'Keefe? <laughs> no, but he's just as handsome. You know, Margie, it don't seem fair. Just because you're a perfectly honest, upright girl, you can't get to meet with your Norman. But if you were some slippery, slinky, up to no good female spy, he'd be after you. Well, carry nation and broken bottles. I think that <laughs> is. I must be an offender. Don't you see? All we got to do is to make that young man think you're a spy. Mrs. Odette, you've been seeing too many movies. Maybe you haven't been seeing enough movies. A handsome FBI man, he gets suspicious of you, has to find out what you're up to, figures a way to meet you, asks for a date, takes you dining and dancing. That sounds pretty good, Mrs. Odette. But don't you think it's a little too wild? Besides, I might get into trouble kidding around with the FBI. How could you get into trouble? There's no law against just being suspicious. That's right. And as soon as he got interested, I could drop the act.
buy a flower from a poor old lady? Perhaps. But first, have you the time? My boss has stopped. The time is late. The time is late? The time is very late. In that case, which flower would you suggest? To match a lovely lady's skin. Thank you, kind lady. I must phone first. I may have to leave immediately. <laughs> he, he's already suspicious. Did you leave our secret message on the table? Too obvious. He heard me say I was going to phone. Let's see how smart he is. Come on, let's go. 377XY. The old flower lady is Mrs. Florence Odette's, the same apartment house. All clean as a whistle. Oh, uh, with one exception. An arrest for driving 90 miles an hour in a 30-mile zone. Which one was that? Mrs. Florence Odette's. <laughs> oh, uh, here's a dupe of the Albright girl's civil defense ID card. And her picture. She looks reasonably sane. Crying out loud, I've seen this girl before. Why, sure, for days now, I've spotted her in the restaurant. I'm trying to get up enough nerve to speak to her. She always has lunch the same time you do? That's right. And always manages to find a table right next to yours, I suppose. Yes, as a matter of fact. What are you driving at? No, um, why didn't you say hello to her and save us all this trouble? What do you mean? <laughs> Holy mackerel! I'm gonna get that girl in and ball the daylights out of her. Brad, just a second. I agree, she, she ought to be balled out, but do me a favor, will you? Let me handle this. Well, I can hear you balling her out. Honey pie, you should not have kid around with the FBI like this. Brad, I give you my word. I'll make her regret she ever learned the word spy, believe me. Okay, I'll leave her to you. What do you got in mind? Well, naturally, I'll have to investigate her first. That's what she wants. Okay. But, brother, after that. <laughs> Hello? Hello, this is the telephone company. We'd like to send a man out to check your phone. It's his voice. Then will your man be here? Very well, I shall expect him then. Yes, goodbye. We did it, we did it. He'll be here tomorrow morning. Oh, wonderful. Phone company. Call me in. Right this way, please. You may start with the phone in the living room. I'll be on the terrace, so you will be undisturbed at your work. Checked your phone, it's okay. Thanks. You're welcome. 
Boy, I sure wish I was rich. Rich? Why do you wish that? Oh, no offense, understand. But if I was rich, well, uh, I could get to do something I've always wanted to do. Take out a ritzy gal like you. <laughs> well, why don't you try asking me and see what the answer will be? It may surprise you. Well, nah, nah, you're way out of my class. money that's stopping you. I know a way you can make a lot of it. I have friends who are looking for an extra telephone man. Can you tap wires, install dictaphones? Yeah. Oh, no. No, that's illegal. <laughs> Say, that job might interest me at that. I'll think about it. Why don't we go dancing tonight and talk it over? Hmm? Oh, I can't dance. Oh, forget about the whole thing. Well, so long. The girl wanted to get her in and ball her out, but I persuaded them to let me handle it, unofficially. Oh, thank you, Mr. Masterson. That was very nice of you. Well, speaking personally, I think she should be taught a lesson. I agree with you. She's got to stop doing these crazy things. Suppose we give her a taste at really being a spy. I have a couple of friends that could help me make it look like the real thing. You mean give her a real good scare? Well, with your permission, I think it could be arranged. Okay, Mr. Masterson, on one condition. Oh, what's that, sir? That you let me in on it. In short, this I gotta see. <laughs> Dad? You're awfully early, aren't you? Doctor. <laughs> Who are you? How did you get in here? With my pass key. My name is not important. You will know me as Seven. Honor to meet you, Countess. Countess? I'm not a Countess. I'm just plain Margie Albright. And you get out of here. Marvelous, Doctor. You wonder, of course, how I located you. I watched you in the restaurant yesterday. You fitted the description we had. Then I saw you draft this message in the phone booth. Then I was sure. You weren't supposed to find this. Enough of this make-believe, Countess. We're all working for the same cause. The leaders are the supersede all others. You will meet him tonight. Please believe me. I'm not a countess, and I don't want to meet anybody. Never out of character, countess. Be at his address at nine tonight. You know the fate of those who disobey the leader. <laughs> You've got to help me. I'm in an awful jam. I'll say you're in a jam. You're under arrest. Sit down. I know it looks bad, but honest, I'm not really a spy. I'm just plain Margie Albright. I haven't done anything wrong. I, I was just pretending it was just a little gag. Oh, let's take this step by step. If you were just playing spy, in heaven's name, why? Please, don't make me tell you why. The important thing... I'm not interested unless I have all the details. All right. I did it because I knew you were an FBI man and I wanted to make you track me down. I'm the girl who spilled water on you. Well, I'll be. You mean to tell me you went to all of this trouble just to meet me? No. I did it because I wanted you to meet me. And that's different. Oh, by the way, I got a full report on you just before you came up here. I know you're not a spy. Go on with your story. That's pretty underhanded, Mr. Masterson. Okay, I'm a heel. I agree, but I haven't time to elaborate on that now. A real spy named Seven gave me this. He thinks I'm somebody called the Countess because of what I did in the restaurant. And tonight at nine, I'm supposed to be at that address to meet somebody they call the leader. This is our chance to break up this whole spy ring. With you as the Countess working for us, we'll be right on the inside. But I don't want to be the Countess. Honest, I wouldn't know what to do. I'd be scared stiff. Oh, please, Mr. Masterson, don't ask me to do a thing like that. Let's think of it this way, Miss Albright. You will be a real patriot. Uh, but suppose they find out I'm not the real Countess. Well, they might kill me. If they kill you, I'll give you my solemn promise. I'll see each and every one of them brought to trial. Thanks. And I'll be a real dead patriot. <laughs> Number 46 is right back there. I'll wait here. Go 
ahead. It's two minutes to nine. Instructions for the Countess? Greater Jean Q. This is even greater than I have dreamed. Our agents have stolen a sample capsule of the most powerful explosive in the whole world. Hydrogen Q. And you, you Countess, have been chosen to guard it with your life. Until we make arrangements to fly it to our country, I shall bring it to you at midnight tonight. Any further instructions, leader? Be careful. Make sure that you're not observed. Until midnight, Captain. To be frank with you, Margie, something could go wrong. This could be goodbye. Goodbye? Just in case. Goodbye. It isn't safe. What do you mean? Go to your room and don't come out no matter what happens. with the FBI. Give me that capsule. No. You'll never get your hands on it again. Give it to me. Stay away from me or I'll drop it and go to all the things. just done a great service to her country, sir. My little Margie? Honey, what's the matter? It's all over. What's wrong? Where's the capsule, Margie? I swallowed it. No. I can't disclose the details, sir, but your daughter has just swallowed a sample of the world's highest explosive. What? Baby! Oh, don't touch me. I might go off. Quick, Mr. Albright, get some pillows. Don't move. Don't move a muscle. Stay right there. Don't move, baby. Careful. Don't take it yourself. It's too risky. I've got a better idea. 
You stay right there. Don't move now. Don't move. Come on. <laughs> Don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. Easy. You hold, you hold the top. Hang on the top there. Ease your back. Gently. Just take it easy. Take it easy. Don't breathe so hard. And, and, and don't blink your eyes. Hold on. Here we go. Careful now. Quick, my hands are slipping. Well, don't drop me. I'm sorry, Margie, but we've got to have that capsule immediately. Right now? Right now. You'll have to be brave, Mr. Albright. This calls for an emergency operation. An operation? On a coffee table? Don't move. Now we take it to a hospital? Well, she might explode. If the movement of the elevator didn't set her off, the riot in the ambulance would. I'll call a doctor. Now, there isn't time. We'll have to do the job ourselves. Now, wait a minute. But I don't know anything about performing an operation, do you? No, but there's a first time for everything. No, you can't do it. Okay, I'm game. You're a real patriot, sir. Thanks. Get me a knife. And bring some bread and butter, too, and we'll make some sandwiches. Care for some salami? Yes, if you please. And you better bring a pair of scissors. I'll bring the pinky shears, and we'll make it fancy. Fine. Hey, I've never watched an operation. Do you mind? I would like to watch, too. Join the party. Sure, any time at all. <laughs> Baby, baby, what's the matter? Oh. What was in that capsule? It was just a vitamin capsule. I got it in the bottle in your medicine chest. Oh, Ted, do you know what you've done? I used up all the vitamins. Those were concentrated hair dye capsules. Deadly poison. Call an ambulance. Get a doctor. Oh, Margie. Margie, speak to me. Oh, why did you do it? All you had to do was tell me you didn't like me. You didn't have to poison me. Oh, you, Margie. Do you hear me? I'm fading. Every time I saw you in that restaurant, I wanted to talk to you. Only I didn't have the nerve. Oh, Margie, darling, you can't leave me now. Hang on, baby. The ambulance will be here in just a minute. Oh, get well for Daddy. And when you're up and around, I'll buy you a nice new car. Do you hear me? Yeah. You've both been coming in real good. Make it a green convertible, huh? And as for you, Mr. J. Edgar Trick Puller, you're going to have to do a lot of apologizing before I'll even speak to you again. The time is late, but I think if we hurry, we can still catch a couple of dances. I accept your apology. <laughs> and don't forget, make it a green. She tricked me. 